Hi again, boys and girls. Today we're going to be uh, showing you a little bit of um, a little bit of excitement. This machine right here is called an Air Arc. Um, it's a plasma cutter, and basically what it, we're going to do is we're going to blow away some of these spot welds that you see here. Everything that you see with a white dot is a spot weld that'll probably uh, be disappearing here shortly. Andy, one of our engineers, um, he's going to be uh, running the Air Arc, and He's going to show you how quickly we can get this car to pieces uh, so we can go in and estimate the weight and the cost associated with each of the components that's inside. We'll also probably do some uh, checking to find out uh, what the different materials are. Not all materials in this car are going to be the same. Some are going to be simple uh, 1020L, a uh, very common kind of steel that's good for stamping. Others are going to be boron steel, some are hot stamped, some are cold stamped, some are high strength, and then some are ultra high strength. So these are the things that you go in uh, design to when you're actually uh, designing a body in white like this. Some people call them monocoques, some people call them unibodies. I just refer to them as a body in white. Anyway, stay tuned, and uh, the next thing you see is Sparks and, uh, and Andy. Thanks so much. Hang on. Okay, you've been watching Andy uh, uh, blowing holes in this thing for a, a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the actual design of the product and what has to happen when you're designing a body. So let's start off with one thing uh, that most people need to know uh, or should know, and that is that um, body engineers are usually the uh, most revered, respected, and uh, hardest to get along with. The reason for that is because everything else hangs off this. This is the fixture for every other part inside the car. If the body's bad, then everything's bad. So let's talk a little bit about the things that, uh, that a body engineer has to do in order to make sure that the product is as good as it can possibly be. So some of the general things that have to happen is that as you design the body, you usually older. Um, you, don't, you don't get uh, kids on this kind of a job. And the reason for that is because you need some profound knowledge to just get going. And in this case, um, in this case for this body, the person who designed this was looking at how do I make things strong where I need it? How do I make them light where I don't need it? Where am I going to weld? How am I going to weld? What am I going to use for welding? There's all kinds of things that have to come into play in, tor in order to make a good body. So let's talk about one thing that's uh, kind of important. Um, shingling is extremely important, and that's figuring out how the different components are going to come together and, and uh, shed water or, or at least make it so that when I put one piece on, I, I'm going to be able to get the second piece on. Shingling is, is uh, a good example of it is right here. So I've got this one pointed up, that one pointed up, this one pointed up. Now in my spot welds, I, I can get my guns in and I can make things happen. One of the other things that I'm going to be talking about a little bit in, from now is, is how do I make different sub-assemblies come together on the assembly line so that I can make sure I've got the job done correctly. Another thing that we have to think about is, okay, so this is called T3. Um, so I have this, this component here, relatively thick, this is the shock tower, and then I've got a component in there and another one over here. So I'm, I've got T3, which means there's three thicknesses I have to weld through, but this one's really thick. These two are relatively thin. My tips have to be extremely well dressed, and I have to make sure that when I squeeze these things together, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not using the weld guns to, to, uh, to support it. I'm using other clamping methods. So now I have to calculate is how many spots can I weld at any given time and how many times am I going to have to shift the guns? 
So a lot of times you'll see the robots coming in to weld. All those robots have to get out of the way where the clamps are, and the clamps have to open and close in order so the, the, the weld guns, the robots with the weld guns can get in there and do their job. So there's many, many things that you have to do in order to make things happen. These parts, by the way, all these parts are gauged before they get to the assembly line so that we don't have variation. Variation is the killer in, uh, in trying to make a, uh, in, in, our, in order to make a product, the parts have to be a good shape, good size and perfect, as perfect as you can get them. That's what we've got here. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we found. So let's look at the first thing. This is the mass damper that we showed you inside here. It, uh, it fit in on the other side right here. We were shocked. Um, this is made out of aluminum. Normally it's made out of iron or something very heavy um, because aluminum is kind of expensive and, um, and it doesn't, it's not really a dampening kind of a, I, I'd prefer lead. Lead is what, uh, what really soaks up vibration. But in this case, it's a piece of aluminum that was stuck into, and I think you remember, I called this the shotgun. It was stuck inside the shotgun. So that's one thing that we saw. <clears throat> Next thing, you'll see this right here. This is a crush can. So let's pull out this one. Now this one was bolted in, it had four bolts holding it in. And um, you'll see that this is made out of extruded aluminum. And this, this end cap here is made out of steel. So we've got this, pop riveted over the, top of the, uh, over the top of the aluminum because steel and aluminum uh, as a rule are not welded together. You can do it, but it's really expensive and it's not, uh, it's not advisable. So if we look at down here, the longitudinals, we'll see that this has got a doubler as well. So we've got a doubler in the longitudinals and we've got this other doubler that's stuck on top of the uh, crush can. And when you shove it in, it's in the right place. Now I can just take my bolts and, and run them down. And uh, I've got no trouble, no trouble putting this in place in the right place. This is what, uh, one of the things that's protecting you when you get into a, uh, when a front end crash. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of the different details. Some of these components laying on the ground here and some of them that aren't even around anymore are, uh, are brackets and what, what not that has to be put into place in order to make sure that this thing has structural integrity. So I'm gonna lift out the one thing, and I talked about it already, and that's the shock tower uh, brace. So this, this part right here, you can look at it, and you can see that Andy uh, blew this thing full of holes. And that's because each one of these holes represented a spot weld. This is what gives you the structural integrity, is these spot welds. And they were all I would say as good as you can get as far as, uh, as far as welding is concerned. So this is a much, much heavier uh, component. It's twice as thick as the normal sheet metal. And we're, I'm not sure what uh, material it's made out of, but I think it's probably gonna be mild steel, not, uh, not high strength steel or anything like that. So we've got that sitting over here. <clears throat> then we go over here and we're gonna look at uh, one of the other pieces. This is the... Um, Things getting in the way. This is uh, the inner that uh, that was put in place prior to putting on the outer for the shotgun. So let's look uh, down here. Can you get in there? Uh, and you can see right there where my pointer is. Hang on, let me get this thing out. Right down there, there's a uh, like a little hook. That little hook is, uh, is uh, called a toy tab. Now sometimes uh, they're welded on like this is, but most of the time what you do is you lance it out. And if I was going to uh, make a suggestion, this is where I would punch and lance a little toy tab so I don't have to have a, a second piece on there. Let's go, uh, let's go and take this gingerly out of here and hopefully without, uh, without, without having things fall down. So. Again, if you look at this, you can see that there's, these are called doublers. This thing here is a doubler. That's for added strength. And that comes out, well, the engineer will know that that's needed when he does something called FEA, finite element analysis. That's what tells you what's gonna bend 
or what's going to break or how the car is going to crash long before, uh, long before you make a prototype or anything else. So last, let's look at the shotgun outer. Now this is going to go in <clears throat> after all the other things are put in because there's no way to weld this. Uh, there's not going to be a way to weld it. So you pull this off and now what you can see is this would go on like that. The nuts would or the bolts would hold it in place. That uh, inner would already be welded there and then all the way along here, all the way down here to make it so that it's uh, an integral part of this uh, car. When these things are all put together, this is um, a little bit of a symphony watching it, if it's done correctly, in the, uh, in the body shop. Watching these things go together uh, most amazes the daylights out of people who haven't ever seen it before. So we're not done yet. <clears throat> you, can see that, um, you can see that we're using the finest of tools. And, uh, and some of them are still stuck inside the body, but uh, we're going to take off the rest of the shotgun. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the lay down body side ring. So this big chunk here, which includes the rear quarter. Anyway, stay tuned and uh, don't forget to tip your cashiers. Thank you very much for uh, visiting Monroe Live and tell your friends. Thanks very much. Bye.